Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about the patch notes. There's some really interesting things that have happened here. I had a big stream, I talked about the patch notes, and then I actually played with a lot of different decks, particularly Nilfgaard. This stuff is really... Some of these things are really necessary for the game, and some of them are kind of confusing. So we're, without further ado, we're just going to go through it one thing at a time. So the general neutral changes are all pretty, most of them are pretty good, I guess. Uh, the weather ones we'll get to. But first, Commander's Horn. Why is Kenfan, Commander's Horn is not going from five to four to a whole row, plus four? This is a nerf, obviously, and the reasoning I can guess behind this is that people were complaining about Gales. Gales was only adding, bringing everything up to six. In your best case scenario, you had a bunch of one strength units and that was that was effectively plus five. There was no situation in where Commander Horn was ever worse than Gale's leader ability. And in many cases, Gale's leader ability was significantly worse than Commander's Horn. Now there's at least a tiny in situation in which Gale's might outperform Commander's Horn, but it's still like you're still going to get hit by the Dimeridium Bomb or a Geralt Igni, so it's not... Ugh. It's a really iffy choice to play Gale's Leader Ability. So, this isn't really enough to make Gale's Leader Ability better than a Silver. But I understand why they're doing it. They're under, the reason why they don't want to mess with Gale's Leader Ability is that Monster has an easy time putting a bunch of stuff on the board. And if it was just a commander's horn, it would get ridiculous. They don't like... I don't I don't think they like commander's horn anyways. They nerfed it several times. And I think it's... It's okay where it is now. There's a lot of wide board strategies. What I mean is... You put a bunch of stuff on the same row and then you buff everything up there. One more thing to add. This also makes this significantly work worse than like the hawker healer that buffs everything by three strength on the row. Like, cause that's a bronze card. Even though it's plus three, it's like, you would never play Commander's Horn now at Scoia'tael deck because you have the Hawker Healer. Now Triskel Marigold now can target both sides of the board. Why would you ever target your own things? Well, you would definitely want to target a, um, you might want to target a cow carcass from Nilfgaard. Then you might want to target a spy if you know your opponent's going to pull the spies over. Uh, th those are basically the only situ- uh, There are a few other situations, but they're not very many. Marigold's Hailstorm, Skellige Storm, and White Frost now are choose effects, kind of like Coral. This is really controversial because it makes them all objectively worse than Aromancy. One thing to note, though, is that these- these effects weren't being played too much outside of um, they weren't being played too much outside of weather monster monster weather decks. I'm not sure if I like this change or hate it. Like, I don't like weather. Period. I think it's like I think it just gets really ridiculous and just like. You know, you just wait it out, and it's like, and eventually you just clear the weather, and you're done for. Your opponent's just throwing all their weather cards. This definitely is an indirect nerf to Sarah, who will only get one weather effect per these per card, except for Ragnarok, which will still give you three weather effects for Sarah. It's just like I think we're gonna see a lot less weather monster and. Where I think I like this is new, uh, new players were quickly gravitating to Weather Monster for easy win against other players who didn't build a deck that could handle weather or weren't playing skillfully enough to save their clear weathers in their hand or to deal with the weather at the end of the round and regain the advantage they had lost. Speaking of monster, uh, we can now move on to Ancient Foglet which is another weather monster staple. Ancient Foglet was outperforming a lot of bronze cards. Not 
Clan Turzak action per se, but it was outperforming them in the sense that it was generating, like it's six strength, and it was weather immune, and it grows over time. The closest other thing was that Skoyta has this unit that every time a unit is revealed on either side of the board gets one strength. That's a pretty strong card, but it's not weather immune, and it has five base strength. Five base, like if you take in the fact that it only gets buffed on your turn, Ancient Voglet, then that's the pain that you're doing for weather immunity. I would actually like to see both of those cards get down to four. In my, yeah, in my opinion. Because they have a potential of being really strong, especially given that the fact that monsters can hold cards onto the board for multiple rounds pretty easily. Avalok has gone and nerfed. Now we're moving away from weather monster, uh, weather monster and we're moving on to other things. Avalok got nerfed. Uh, his base strength went from 6 to 8. This is bad because he's disloyal. Uh, Avalok was outperforming a lot of the spy cards. If you think of Brina Bran as the other disloyal gold card, uh, there's lots of other disloyal gold cards, but that give you card advantage. Brina Bran has 12 base strength, yes. Brina Bran also discards cards to your graveyard, which has synergy effects with a lot of Skele what Skellige wants. This is just, this is probably necessary. Avalok was really strong. Not, not that everybody liked Avalok, just that Avalok was need, needed to be a little harder to justify in many monster decks. Moving on, Crones are now a little bit more similar to the Witchers. You can justify the Crones having one strength each more than the Witchers because uh, they don't have the Witcher tag. So Vesemir gets the 50% bonus to like the Swallow Potion and stuff like that, all the Witchers do. Even if you demote uh, Geralt, it still gets that 50% bonus for uh, like Swallow Potions and Thunderbolt Potions. Crones don't have that tag, so they get the extra uh, base strength instead. So instead of 789, it's now 787. So, eh, that's, I think that's okay. I don't think it's going to kill the Crones, but the Crones weren't be seeing too much play. Well, they were seeing a little bit more play than be uh, after the patch. I was seeing a, more, a lot more people playing Crones. But I think they're still deal. It's still easy to, enough to deal with this kind of stuff. I would like to see what happens to monster players if, given the fact that these three silvers are probably going to see a ton less play, if they're going to move to the crones to fill in that gap. Okay, we're going to talk about the succubus, which for some strange reason is placed here and here, and then Brand Warrior is placed here and here in this listing. So succubus uh, got a buff. It was a disloyal unit, so going down to base strength is good. Uh, so we got a buff there. I would like to see more Succubus play, because I think there's a lot of interesting things you can do with sealing people's units. Anytime you can take a po your opponent's strategy and use it against them, like steal a Mangonel from somebody's graveyard and have them like have all their reveal cards hurt them, that's, that's wonderful. Okay, so... The one nerf is that now Succubus doesn't allow you to replace Agile units wherever you want. So let's say you steal your opponent's Ran Warrior. Ran Warrior is an Agile unit. It'll be on the opposite row as it was on before. So if it was on the range row, it goes to the range row. If it was on the melee row, it goes to the melee row. You no longer get to select where it goes. Okay? Or, yeah. Now, talking about Ran Warrior, Ran Warrior saw a little nerf here, but a big nerf down here. So Vran Warrior used to be able to consume a unit immediately after being played. Now it has to wait those two turns, and this significantly weakens the consume archetype. Uh, will Vran Warrior still be played? Probably. It's just going to be a lot less, no a lot less of a snowball. Before it would just get out of control, and you would just have to pass around, just because you know that the mon consume monster was going to outvalue you eventually. Skellige. Okay, so 
So what happened with Skellige? Skellige, King Bran was the big winner of Skellige. So all this is King Bran, and this is King Bran. And again, the ordering here is a little confusing. Uh, it's basically leader card, silvers, bronze cards, gold card. Uh, maybe it's alpha. I don't know. I don't know what the logic here is in the ordering. King Bran now discards three cards instead of two. The base strength is the same from the last patch. Just adds plus one. Uh, this is great. Being able to discard more cards is always better. You can get your raiders out of your deck and your queen's guard, and you can do some funny shenanigans with cards that you might want to revive immediately. Morkvark is obviously going to see a lot more play. It's a really good... It's good King Bran is going to be one of the best Skellige leaders, I think, coming in this next patch. Especially given the fact that a lot of other discard cards are now much better. So Savan and Ermion now draw before you discard. You want to be able to discard the cards you don't need. And you do not want to draw the cards you don't want. So Ermion's now like a a six strength gold card that plays Last Wish. You draw the two cards and then you discard. Svan is like a mini uh, Last Wish. Draw one card, discard something. Okay. And this is all really good for the King Brand archetypes. Dreg Bondu is no longer relentless. If you remember in the exact, the absolute last patch, Dreg Bondu was made relentless as a hotfix. And now he's not relentless no more. The reason for this is that now he only can pick two non gold units instead of affecting the entire graveyard. This isn't bad for the Queen's Guard if that's your focus. So, the Queen's Guard, there are three of them. If you play Dragon Dew, uh, before this change, it would add two base strength to all of them, which counted as six strength. Now it adds three strength to two units. Three times two is six still, so it's not affecting it on the first time. But if you play Dragon Dew multiple times, either by reviving him, I think he's no longer fleeting. I'd have to double check that, but I think he's no longer fleeting. Or if you pick him up with a decoy since he's no longer relentless, you can definitely make some really, really big Queen's Guards, and everybody knows that dealing with Queen's Guards is annoying. Clan Tur... Uh, Tur... Tur... Uh, okay. The Armorsmith has had a nerf from 6 to 5. Armorsmith is like... You have at least one in your Skellige deck to deal with weather, maybe. It's it's a really good card, because you... And I don't think it's, this is enough to eliminate it from the game, but it is going to hurt it a little bit. Okay, the final... This is the big change, and there's only... Well, it's actually two lines on this, because they decided to also put the Tursok Axeman down here. So... Take into account that you will have, uh, there's a lot of Axeman stuff that's down here, and we'll get to that uh, after we talk about this huge change. So Clan Tursok Axeman only gets strength every time there's you damage a unit on the opposite side, side of the field. This reads really poorly. It sounds like, so let's read it, gets one strength for every damage unit on the opposite side of the board. It sounds a lot like the Emperor Brigade that got three strength for every spying unit on the opposite side of the board. Or stuff like that. Or... This is... Ignore this. What it actually does is down here. And this might be because they had multiple iterations of this patch uh, in testing. So... This is the big change. Clan Tursok's ability only triggers by opposing units getting, and the uh, implied text here is uh, getting wounded. Okay, so it, before, if I, like, say, use an Azure's Thunder on your my opponent's Savage Bear, the Tursok Axeman would get buffed. That's no longer the case. It's The Axeman will not, like, my control cards are no longer helping the Axeman get huge. 
And this kind of fits with the the nerfs to War Dancer and uh, later Emperor Brigade, where uh, units that you you no longer your units no longer get buffed by your opponent's cards. Uh, War Dancer was getting buffed by your opponent's ambush cards. Uh, Emperor Brigade was getting was getting buffed by your opponent's spy units. That's no longer the case, and we'll talk about that soon. So, Axeman overall is nerfed. Uh, will this kill Axeman? No, but it will definitely make them easier to deal with. Axeman was getting out of control, and they recognize this up here. Yeah. Its ability not only works with opponent's side. This is a they call this a big change, and I agree. Uh, it makes the control verse uh, wounding deck a lot easier to, to handle. So that's the Skellige changes overall. I say Harold was a loser. King Bran is the winner of this area. But overall, I also think that since Ermion is going to be played in Herald that this is still really good for Skellige overall. Northern Realms, the Siege supports are no longer Agile. They've been removing Agile from a lot of units and it makes sense that the Siege support should stay in the Siege row. What's what's the Siege support doing in the melee row? I'm going to sh you know, use swords against these guys even though my job is to shrink the ballistas. Like, What are you doing up here? You're Get back there. <laughs> uh, another change is reinforcements. This, again, the logic of this uh, patch note is kind of crazy. This should be like down here given how it reads. So it no longer can only trigger... You can now target bronze units that don't have cards in your deck with the reinforcements. Uh, this is good because it, previously if you didn't have a valid target for reinforcements, you couldn't play the card. At least that's how I'm reading this. Um, and that would get, lower your card advantage significantly. You know, losing one card advantage is pretty big since, you know, you have a dead card in your hand. So now, what happened to Scoitel? Uh, Dennis Kramer, uh, Kramer got a... The one-turn timer isn't a big deal. That's just a UI change. Lubricant got this change too. It's down here. Year. Again, the logic of these. This patch note is crazy. <laughs> since the exact same kind of text is being right here. Dennis Kramer resets a, all the non gold units on a row back to their base strength. Um, in a niche scenario, let's say your opponent's playing a Dragoon buffed Toruvel. You play the Dennis Kramer on their side and then pass. The Toruvel will flip. Dennis Kramer will go off at the beginning of their turn and then get reset to base strength. In that very niche situ situation, you would use Dennis. Um, also, you might use it to counter weather since it activates at the beginning of all your turns. You just have to hope it doesn't get killed. It's also agile, loyal, and disloyal. So you can play, play it anywhere. Deal with stuff. It's like a very flexible Dimeridium bomb that can't de-gold units. I like Dennis. I might experiment with him later. He's a dwarf card too, so you can take that advantage of that. Nilfgaard has seen some changes. A lot of changes. They're almost all, I would say every single one of them is a buff. Okay. So Emperor Brigade, which is talked about here, uh, and here, for some reason, uh, Imper Brigade now gets only boosted by opposing units, as we talked before, and now it's three strength instead of two. In almost every circumstance, this means your Imper Brigade will be much bigger than it used to be. Are we going to see more Imper Brigades? I'm not sure. It's a, lot, a very unreliable card. However, if you get th uh, like two spies on the board, it's already worth because you're getting a 12 point unit. Yeah, and it's not that hard to get two spies on the board with um, a spy deck, since you have the brown, brown, bronze units. You could probably make a pretty good improver grade deck now that it's three instead of two. 
Yeah. I'm not sure if it'll push it to the point that, that it's actually used and ranked. So, I'd have to experiment with it more. Uh, let's go with more spy stuff. Treason got buffed. It now adds 8 to an opposing spy unit. I'm not sure if it had a buff before. It might have been like plus 4. Who knows? I never used the card. And I haven't seen anybody ever use it. I don't think Treason's going to see play yet. Because you have... You have John. You don't really... Treason isn't really necessary. It's, it takes up a slot. And you have Kahir. And so... You're going to have two rounds where you're going to pull all your spying units back anyways. Treason doesn't really help with that. Uh, any other things for... Nazica Brigade now deals 5 damage. So let's say you pull off Hakim Devet. Now you can kill Hakim Devet with Nazica Brigade. So that's good. It's harder to... Um, it's easier to get uh, Nazica Brigade to go off and get that extra base strength. It would go up from 5 to 9 whatever. So that's good. That's really good. Uh, everything else other than this one down here is for Amir, and we're going to talk about it. Amir really got buffed in this patch, and I don't blame him. The Manganels are now 4-6. to six. This is good. Makes them a little safer. Uh, there's a double space here because they have another typo. You see? Double space. Uh, it's not important. Uh, so this is good. They're going to be able to push a little bit more value onto the board. This puts them a little bit more in line with the uh, the ballistas that you have in Henselt decks that do one damage every time something turns gold. Puts them up to the same base strength of six. But these do two strength. So, eh. I think it evens out because turning things gold gives you more value on the board, so the one strength for the, and then the plus two strength. Yeah, whatever. Megan L's are better. I'm not gonna, I'm not sure if they'll see play because the setup is really tough. They're just not as much of a dead card in the last round when everything is revealed in both players' hands. Spotters now review, uh, get plus one for every car revealed card whenever they're played. It's a little bit more like Elias, which is good. Uh, they also have that Cthune text at the end, wherever they are. Uh, yeah, wherever he is, wherever it is. It's very Cthune-esque. Um, I think the spotters are going to be... You're going to see a lot of spotters in Amir's decks. They're really good. Uh, to counter out this buff, buff, their base strength has been moved from 5 to 4. I've been seeing 14 strength. Well, this is an Amir ma uh, mirror matchup, so that's not really accurate. I don't think a 10 strength spotter is unlikely with this. Now, is a 10 strength spotter worth it? I'm not sure. I don't think... I'm not sure if a 10 strength spotter is worth it, but... It will be easier to win the final round having a bunch of 11 strength and 12 strength units. So the spotters, let's say they get up all the way to 12 strength. You... Then you also have those 11 strength units that reveal a card in your hand. This is really great for that. Alright, so spotters are there. These are mostly just base strength changes. Cynthia's is kind of important because it lowered the Guardian down from 8 to 6. This makes Cynthia much better. You can also put Cynthia in conjunction with Stefan to get the card you wanted. So play Stefan, put a card to the top of your deck, then play Cynthia, draw that card. So that's, that's one way to counteract the Guardian. You're not really going to kill the Guardian anyways. So as long as the card you draw is worth more than that 6 base strength, then go ahead. <laughs> it's great. Menno got buffed by 1 strength. That's good for spy decks. Now here's another big change. Boris does no longer shuffles your deck. This is really good, especially if you're playing Kalaneta or Cantarella. Cantarella. There you go. Cantarella is the name. If you're playing Cantarella, you do not want the card that you put on the bottom of the deck getting shuffled by Vorys. This is great. You want this this to be true. Okay, now we're going to go down these uh, game fixes. Pavetta will no longer get killed by using Azur's Double Cross. That's kind of a bug thing. Regus not transforming the higher vampire was an annoying bug. Uh, this thing should have been in the Nilfgaard patch notes. 
Uh, Tiber now gets base strength instead of buff green strength. It makes him safer from Dimerium Shackles and uh, Dimerium Bomb. Yeah. Um, revealed ambush cards will be affected by weather now. So let's say you have Quen Sign on your Tori Bell. That means if they play a weather twice, the weather will break the Quen Sign and then the unit will get affected by weather. I'm going to have to experiment with whether or not they're going to apply the weather twice, like when it reveals itself and when it's not revealed. Uh, ambush cards were kind of getting ridiculous in the fact that they were immune to virtually everything. <laughs> uh, but weather no longer removes buffs, so we have to take that into consideration. Uh... Yeah, Lubricant has a timer, but that's just a that's just a UI thing. It's not really changing Lubricant in any way. Lubricant should be permadeath or whatever. Like most spawn units are permadeath. Yeah. So that's the patch re in review. I hope this was helpful for you guys. Uh, I'll just put in this one little summary. Uh, consume monsters and weather monster got hit hard. For whatever reason. Um, King Bran got really a lot stronger and Harold got hit a little bit. I won't say it's enough to push him out but you got because Harold's still a really strong leader. Skellige needs a little help but with some of the buffs overlapping between King Bran and Harold because of Ermion being a popular card in everybody's deck, I think Harold's still gonna be fine. Northern Realms and Scoia'tael aren't really going to be hurt too much. My favorite deck with ambush cards is going to be... Uh, it's going to get affected a little bit, but it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Okay. Nilfgaard. Everything's a buff. All the leaders are much better. Uh, not enough to make them OP. Uh, well, I hope they're not OP. Uh, Amir still feels... Like, there's a little still a lot of trade-off with playing Amir, since the leader ability doesn't automatically generate you value. You have to set it up to make it worth it. Because, you know, seeing your opponent's hand is only so valuable. It's not that... It's not terribly valuable. But, yeah. Thanks for watching, and have a